Hey guys, and welcome to Craft Classy. If you're new, I'm Carolyn, and I do DIY or Trash to Treasure videos every week. I hope you'll stick around by clicking that subscribe button. I had a very busy week this week, but I did do these two DIYs I thought I'd share with y'all. Let's get started. For this first DIY, I took these little drawers that I got from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to be gluing them together to make one drawer unit. I have six of them, and I'll be finishing them with this antique wax. But before that, we'll be gluing them together with this wood glue. And I have these drawer pulls that I got off of Amazon. I will leave the link to these in the description box below. If anyone has been wondering, I, I'm using paintbrushes and here I'm using um, a popsicle stick to apply the wood glue to what I'm gluing. And that's because the um, applicator tip on my wood glue has fused closed. So it doesn't work anymore. So I have to open the whole bottle and um, I'm not gonna just throw it away. The glue is still fine inside of there. So it's a little aggravating, but not too bad. So I just use an old paintbrush or a stick to stick the glue on there. I'm using these little clamps that I got at Dollar Tree and some other clamps that I have and um, I'm just going to glue these all together and wait, wait for the glue to set up before I use the antique wax. Now if you're going to do this project, I would advise to do some of these things differently than what I did. Um, I could have in the store checked to see which boxes, which shelves were um, the most similar in size, like if there were any that were a little bigger, because these, all these boxes were basically a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller or just different than the other. They're not perfectly square, and that's just the nature of things that you buy at the Dollar Tree. A lot of times things aren't going to be exactly the same. So, you know, that would be advisable to just check in the store and try to get some that are as close to the same as possible. Now, because of some of the unevenness and some of the gaps, I'm going to be filling those in and trying to make things even with this wood filler. This wood filler I got from Walmart, it is stainable and paintable. They do sell spackling at the Dollar Tree, but I wanted to be able to stain this and it look as good as possible, so I'm using this product. But you could definitely use that spackling from the Dollar Tree if you're going to paint it. I've never stained over that spackling, so I don't know how that would turn out. After the wood filler has dried, I'm going to go over it with this sanding sponge from the Dollar Tree just to smooth everything out. And it's still not perfect, but I like for things to have an imperfect look and to look old and look like it's been through some stuff. Uh, I'm not, um, I don't have a very modern style. So if something has character, I am all about that instead of something that looks perfectly perfect. After you've wiped off the sanding residue, you're just going to take the um, antique wax or the paint and that, you know, if you decide to paint it, and I'm just going to stain the inside, um, stain all over the surfaces inside and out of, the, of this drawer unit and the drawers themselves.
I really love the way these are turning out. And to put our drawer pulls on, I'm going to drill um, drill holes before screwing on each drawer pull because this wood is very thin and prone to uh, splitting and cracking. It's best to drill a pilot hole before you use a screw on this wood. I've wanted to do this project for a while. I love the look of the card catalog, um, library style cabinets, um, drawer units, but they're very expensive. And so I love that this is a miniature version of that. And these drawer pulls, it was $15 for 30 of them. So I have a bunch left over and that comes out to like 50 cents each. So very affordable and I get a piece that has that vibe to it that I like. You can see that there is some unevenness in these drawers, but I just love how it turned out. I like the, um, the vintage vibe that it's got going on. I don't know what I'm going to use for it yet, maybe jewelry, but I'm sure I can find a use for it. For this next DIY, you'll need a sheet of this cork that you can find at the Dollar Tree, some stain or paint, I'm using this Antique Wax by Waverly, and you'll need this, um, a food can or some container of, you know, whatever you choose. But I'm just going to apply this Antique Wax to the cork and let it dry. And we're trying to create the look of bark. So I'm going to tear this cork unevenly and just sort of rough it up a bit and try to give it that look because I'm we're going to be making a vase or a planter and it's going to have the look of a faux log. I'm leaving the backing on this adhesive cork because we're going to be using that to stick onto our container instead of having to glue it. I will be doing some gluing on some of the smaller pieces where I didn't feel the adhesive was enough and I wanted to ensure it will stay stuck. I'm tearing off uh, the majority of the straight edges 
because bark doesn't naturally have any very straight lines. It's all very um, free form. So I'm just going to line it up here on the can and trim away the excess. And um, I'm leaving a little bit of overhang because I'm going to come back at the end and trim everything up nicely. You really can make this bark however you think it would look best, what you think a, um, what faux bark would look like to you. You might want to use some gray paint, um, just depending on the look you're going for. I'm going to overlap the pieces. If you're going to, instead of overlapping, if you're going to leave gaps, you're definitely going to want to paint your container so that you don't see that shiny metal showing through. You're going to want to bend your cork to kind of create cracks in it and then I'm also going to come back with the scissors and just kind of rough the cork up because it still looks too new and nice and it needs more texture and dimension. It's just too smooth. I know that there are some trees that have a smooth look, and if that's the look you're going for, that's fine. You might not think it needs um, this abuse, but that's the look that I wanted to go for. So here I am just of course, sort of crinkling it up, and the more you do that, I feel the better it looks. At the end, I instead of doing a whole new sheet of cork, I was just going to use the leftovers. So I just cut, um, tore down the pieces to size and slapped them on there. And I'm going to come back because a lot of these smaller pieces just need more adhesive because it's not as much surface contact. So um, I found that a lot of the overlapping at the very end where I was just piecing it together, I felt like it looked the best there. So I almost feel like maybe I shouldn't have done strips and I should have done more shorter pieces, but you can make it to however you like, whichever way you think it looks best. Now where I tore the cork, you can see the exposed unstained cork along the edges there of the pieces. So I'm going to go back and create, um, um, cover that up and create some shadows here on our faux bark. You could leave it like it is, um, or like I said, use a different color, other colors that you might would see in tree bark. But I'm just going to cover up that exposed unfinished cork and also go over it doing some dry brushing.
Now for the edges and the bottom of our container here, you can do whatever you'd like. You could um, put some trim or some twine, or you could really finish it off however you like. I thought that this moss would look good around the rim of the vase. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm and I'm just chopping it up so it's a little more fine, so there's not as many long pieces hanging over. And then I'm just going to glue a little bit at a time, and you can see here the adhesive on the cork is picking up um, some moss as well, but I'm just going to go back, kind of pick that off, and then use hot glue to um, to stick our moss onto the rim here. You could paint the bottom, you could put more bark on the bottom, or you could just leave it unfinished because honestly no one's probably going to be looking at the bottom. But I decided to go ahead and just add more moss to the bottom. I made sure to chop it up very fine and um, to just put a thin even coating on the bottom so that it would still be sturdy and not be wobbly. I just love how this turned out and how it looks. I think I'm going to keep it on my back porch, which is covered. And anytime I put flowers out there, I'll use this. A lot of times when my nieces come over, they go out and pick wildflowers and bring them to me. I think this would be a great vase for wildflowers. Thank you so much for watching today and hanging out with me. If um, you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'll help my channel out a lot. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I hope you have a great day.